Welcome to the Strategies for Sustainable Continuous Improvement Initiatives session. I'll now turn things over to our presenter. Uh, thank you, Mallory. Appreciate it. Um, can you hear me okay? <laughs> Right. Yes, we can. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, so uh, excited to uh, present uh, my study, my research, uh, mostly focused on continuous improvement and the sustainability of all things continuous improvement. Um, kind of my background has been in that field and doing supply chain industry work. And um, currently I'm an assistant professor at High Point University out in North Carolina. So uh, teaching supply chain management. So this kind of keeps doing what I always like to enjoy doing. So I was very interested when I'm doing my um, study and finishing it up last year. So um, not uh, haven't even hit a, a year yet on finishing my doctorate. So I'm uh, uh, still excited. And, you know, to, to hear my students call me Dr. Williams, I'm like, Who, who's that? My father? No, that's that's me now. So um, I'm sure everybody else could uh, uh, relate. Uh, but anyway, um, uh, kind of jumping into my session about uh, about my research here on, on this topic. Um, if you can go to the next slide, please. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to frame um, uh, a little bit about uh, what I did for my study and research and all that. Um, kind of the sustainability is a misnomer, I think, in the titling. Um, you know, when I put it together a year or more ago, um, it's not really on the like sustainability, like making things green side. It's more on keeping continuous improvement projects around and functional um, kind of from the problem statement uh, it's it's probably very very low to say that 30 percent of continuous improvement um, initiatives fail um, probably in my experience in the industry it's 60 percent 70 percent sometimes higher if it's not planned out right but uh, uh, kind of the research i could find to put a number behind it was like 30 percent. so that's what i stuck with um, but uh, uh, more or less there's this problem that uh, projects don't really last longer than a year they kind of fizzle out and and die after you initiate um, uh, a nice way to improve processes improve production um, uh, kind of uh, making things better in your industry especially in a supply chain setting um, uh, organization so uh, a lot of high rate of implementation failure that's occurred and and uh, a lot of this research kind of in the supply chain world is um, kind of pre-COVID. Uh, I think when I was going through this, we were still in that kind of high um, COVID disruption phase. Uh, so um, I think uh, more research is probably needed in the field now than than even a year ago or two years ago when I was looking, uh, looking into putting my study together. Uh, but kind of the big problem is that first year to focus on uh, what, what do organizations do to make um, continuous improvement efforts successful? Uh, what strategies, what types of leadership principles are they using? Um, the, the main purpose uh, of that, uh, to really look at those things that are going on behind the scenes, the strategies um, that um, leaders use in a supply chain setting um, to make these initiatives, these projects that they're putting a lot of effort, time, money, resources into, uh, into being successful um, and lasting longer than a year was my target. So uh, as far as a population, I looked at um, uh, supply chain leaders from a specific organization uh, located in the Midwest region. I won't tell you who they are to protect a, a uh, protect their identities and all that kind of stuff, of course, but the um, uh, organization was very large, had multiple um, locations uh, all throughout the Midwest um, and uh, uh, different uh, distribution, supply chain, e-commerce, uh, uh, that kind of realm. So that's kind of what I looked at, uh, um, targeting leaders in that uh, organization and specifically leaders that have successfully done uh, continuous improvement and, and found them successful, um, which um, uh, was part of it. Uh, and, and really kind of looking at um, kind of the implications of, of, you know, social change was, uh, you know, the productivity piece, you know, delivery speed, um, getting goods to consumers faster, more efficiency built in, you know, lean and Six Sigma and those kind of continuous improvement methodologies, which there's many of. Uh, so I, I kind of looked at that uh, behind the purpose of it. Um, significance wise, um, really looked at, uh, uh, you know, 
improving resources, sustainable economic benefits. Um, uh, there's a practice in continuous improvement where you, you're not just creating efficiencies to get rid of people. You're creating methods and means to put them in the right place. So, uh, you know, ways to make steady state environments from a production capability uh, is kind of what the, the big thing was and, and going through that in the research. Um, and they could benefit, you know, from these increased efficiencies, higher level uh, uh, results of goods being delivered on time, uh, things that supply chain uh, folks like myself, we we enjoy, you know, when things show up on time. Um, so uh, the theory uh, or framework, I, a conceptual framework that I use specifically was based on uh, total quality management, uh, mostly um, Deming's work, if you're familiar with his work on, um, uh, you know, different ways to kind of make these uh, types of uh, so processes function and, and how do you deal with the people and the leadership and um, some of the things that I focus specifically on his work were like the themes uh, associated to total quality management of continuous improvement as a principle, um, customer satisfaction, you know, you got to keep uh, your customers happy and satisfied on, you know, making sure things show up when they, they should. Um, Information distributed in network, uh, how do you communicate that uh, throughout a, a network of many, many buildings, maybe globally, what does that look like? And also um, leadership commitment, that's a pretty big deal in continuous improvement. Um, and policy deployment was kind of the last uh, main effort of total quality management. There's a whole lot more um, to be said <laughs> if you've read anything about total quality management itself. But um, uh, so I mainly looked at those key things and address those as a framework around um, to align my research um, and principles around that. So um, uh, next slide, please. Okay, and, and just going through the different uh, relevant scholarship, the, uh, the different uh, literature out there, um, really some of the tenets uh, behind total quality management. Uh, there's a lot that goes into being said of um, like Deming's 14 points of leadership. He had specific points, um, uh, things that leaders can do in projects of such states to uh, keep, uh, keep projects alive um, and, and employees engaged and leaders engaged and that kind of stuff. So that was very prevalent in a lot of the different research, um, but really kind of um, looking at um, how to use an organizational environment. Um, there's a couple of players, you know, Demi and there's a gentleman named Duran uh, who also had some things, you know, about um, lack of organizational leadership support could re uh, results in uh, uh, failed initiatives and, and kind of defining that further, um, you know, maybe some uh, statistical process control, things like that that were introduced, which um, really gave way to the uh, it's called the Duran Trilogy, but you know, we look at planning, control, improvement, a lot of things that might be in this, what you call Six Sigma realm of a methodology to uh, uh, continuous improvement practices. Um, so leadership engagement is pretty big in uh, total quality management and in most of the continuous improvement efforts, um, uh, no matter which one you practice, about making sure the leaders are a part of make, uh, uh, the successful aspects of the projects lasting. And um, really looked at the links in the, the literature, um, uh, you know, the importance of it at all levels, that leaders are engaged, they're involved, they know what's going on, they know what the needs of their employees are. And that kind of came out uh, in just about everything written about continuous improvement or which methodology you know out there um, uh, all kind of have the same kind of theme for um, uh, leadership being a primary key to the success of that. Um, so that's kind of one of the bigger parts of the, of the scholarship that I think I came across uh, uh, going through. Um, uh, next slide, please. And the study itself, I based the research question on um, uh, what strategies do supply chain leaders use to sustain continuous improvement in initiatives beyond the first year? Um, so again, I really wanted to know, um, how do you keep those projects alive? Um, uh, how, how are leaders doing it? And because um, uh, there's all, all uh, I guess if you if you do read the literature, there's all kinds of stuff out there on how the projects fail. Um, there's 
uh, mountains of, of papers written on projects aren't success, successful because of this or uh, you know uh, this. So there, there was there was some lacking, I think, in the well. Somebody has to do it right uh, <laughs> out there. So I, I really kind of wanted to look and see what uh, what was being done right, and then how does that sustain? And uh, you know, procedurally, I, I used qualitative study. Uh, I used a case study design, um, more or less, because I wanted to listen to leaders and and have them tell me their story about how did they make it successful. Um, you know, I, I looked at a single case study because I was using that one organization, but I did have multiple uh, locations. Um, so there was different settings within that, but uh, as far as the roles, um, similar roles, whether in a supply chain, um, either operations managers, uh, uh, practitioners, um, continuous improvement or process improvement managers, uh, different ones that were specific into an operational role that would affect and put these types of projects into place. Um, so I think from procedurally, a uh, qualitative study was probably the best method uh, uh, as opposed to sending out surveys and, and just saying, I did this and uh, or I did not do this. Um, I think the case study was probably the best method to um, go out and listen and observe and um, see, see what um, uh, see what they had to say for their uh, uh, organization. And um, uh, as far as the uh, participants, I, I specifically targeted um, distribution center leaders um, in supply chain. Um, and that, again, could be within e-commerce. That could be within a supply system. Uh, anybody that's distributing goods um, as opposed to like a manufacturing side, um, uh, just because it was uh, kind of familiar to me in my background and I could easily relate to uh, some of the things there. Um, but I also uh, looked at somebody with at least three years of continuous improvement methodology experience. Uh, doesn't mean they had to be an expert, but at least practiced in um, some type of methodology and um, there's different types between Lean and Six Sigma. And of course there's Agile these days. Um, uh, total quality management kind of has its own uh, realm, uh, change management practices. There's several different kinds of things out there that some people might use. Uh, predominantly, most of it was uh, Lean and Six Sigma uh, based from the different feedback I got. So I'll kind of cover that in the, in the, in the later stages here. Uh, but De uh, definitely, uh, the, I wanted people with uh, specific knowledge in applying the strategies. So uh, I wanted to make sure that they actually had successful projects. I know that's kind of uh, seems like the, to meet my research question. Um, uh, they had to have experience, you know, making a project and having it last. And that was the, the challenge. I think defining participants was <laughs> maybe doing such a refined type um, and also you know, implementing um, in the in the supply chain industry. Um, and as far as data analysis um, uh, for this, um, I uh, uh, collected all the information um, using some structured interviews, um, uh, observation, did member checking. Uh, I know it was kind of during the height of COVID. Um, so um, the observation could definitely be more expanded now that things would seem to be a little more loose, um, you know, going to going to specific sites and watching in person. Um, there are most cases I had to do, um, which I was limited to doing, um, you know, video um, like we're doing here on some locations just because uh, uh, there are most places were closed to public access uh, when I was going through uh, uh, through this. And also I reviewed uh, archival documents um, uh, used um, uh, FMEAs, which are failure mode effect analysis, um, uh, kind of a specific plan for keeping projects from failing in the and organizations document this out. And uh, so I, I, I looked at a few of those to kind of see what did they plan for and, and uh, or did they even do that at all, you know, if they had projects that may have failed or last. Uh, so then finally kind of used triangulation, data saturation, you know, I kind of went through the interview process until um, identifying themes and no new themes emerged, uh, used thematic analysis, you, uh, put it all through in vivo and um, uh, use that as a basis to find those different themes that I'll, I'll talk about here in a minute. So um, uh, next slide, please. So uh, again, the, the kind of specific of the findings um, after putting it all into in vivo and analyzing and all that kind of fun stuff that goes with it. The, the main themes that jumped out that uh, um, 
uh, were addressed by the different leaders I interviewed. Uh, leadership engagement, which uh, kind of matched easily with the uh, uh, literature um, in the entire process was uh, very important. Employee engagement um, was another main theme. That, uh, it's not enough just to have the leaders engaged. The employees also have to, to care and want to put an effort to sustain it as well. Um, and also uh, standardization and continuous improvement practices across the network, not just one facility, but across several uh, facilities that emerged, which I found interesting. And also training of leaders and employees and continuous improvement methods. Um, so, you know, training and these different methodologies um, uh, became important. Um, and uh, so a couple of the, the specific points I threw on here um, uh, to try to boil it down to a few minutes instead of hours. Um, but um, uh, some of the participants, you know, described um, they were supported and driven by organizational leadership. So, um, you know, definitely had that backing of the leadership. They're going to go out, sponsor the projects, um, make them successful. Um, had four participants agree standardization um, within the organization created greater success efforts, which I thought was interesting. The standardization came apart or came about, um, you know, things that we do. Um, you know, kind of sounded like, you know, we do this process here, then we do it differently at another facility, uh, maybe making those similar types of things so they're easier to control and employees are trained better, that kind of stuff. Um, also, we had a, a high participant rate of uh, successful outcomes, um, like training in the methodology. So um, if it was Lean Six Sigma used at this organization, or maybe was some change management practice here, um, what, uh, you know, how did they train? What did that look like? Um, did they train at all? Um, seemed like there was uh, some, some organizations did and some didn't and some invested more in training than others and, and that might result in different outcomes, um, kind of building that culture within. And also the employee engagement uh, also played a key part in the success of, of seem like the different topics that arose in that are, you know, keeping the um, employees engaged by allowing them to participate in change initiatives um, and uh, part of the training as well, um, training the employees in your workforce in those initiatives so they know what to do, they can contribute equally uh, was an important part as well. So um, next slide, please. Um, the interpretation of, uh, you know, again, it was kind of a single case study itself, but um, uh, really developed this understanding of what things can contribute to uh, successful CI initiatives. Uh, uh, really kind of drawing on that, that the suggest the leadership and employee engagement, um, and that's through the literature, very relevant of projects, uh, even in project management world, you know, they're if you don't have leaders that support it or your employees that do the job don't support it, it's not likely that it's gonna be a success. So that was very prevalent uh, that it came out um, and that the uh, methods, uh, standardization and methods used uh, were definitely a big part of it as well as training. So kind of those same themes. Um, some of the, uh, so I'll do recommendations next, um, uh, based off of the, of, you know, the data, data collected from the, um, uh, from the participants. Uh, my recommendations based on all of this is that um, uh, any, any leader in supply chain, they, they really must ensure that the leaders are engaged in the process. If they're gonna make the, um, the, the project successful, um, you know, have any shot of lasting more than a year, they've really got to focus on the accountability follow-up and then the buy-in piece, which was the kind of the biggest telling thing from the participants was, um, you know, the, uh, the buy-in from not just the employees, but from the leaders above the leaders doing the project of, you know, making sure they're invested, that it's successful. Um, the other thing is that the leaders working directly with employees in the methods, um, uh, to generate engagement. Uh, so basically just uh, ensuring there's employee engagement, the employees are um, uh, engaged in the process and that comes through training. That also comes from the creating buy-in, creating motivation. Um, there were some participants that talked about, you know, how to um, uh, different methods that they might use to uh, create that motivation in their, um, their teams and, and that kind of thing, whether it was communication boards or um, group huddles, um, uh, different training events. Uh, there's a lot of neat things that came a part of. Uh, so it's kind of based on, uh, you know, ensuring there's a way to do that. Um, also that um, leaders um, 
should provide standardization and processes. Um, I know that's kind of a uh, continuous improvement, uh, no matter which kind of methodology you're in, that's kind of a, a, a given through uh, what we practice, uh, but uh, specific to um, uh, the findings of the study and, and the data provided um, that the standardization occurs from across departments, across teams, across the different buildings. Because um, again, it was one company I targeted that had several locations. Uh, so it's kind of unique to see the different viewpoints from different locations on, on you know, one might operate this way and one might operate this way and we could be much more effective and create these projects that last um, if it was done kind of cohesively throughout. So I thought that was telling. Um, also the, um, uh, kind of social change that I mentioned earlier is really, you know, creating those opportunities for um, uh, uh, better, uh, I don't know if say economic development, but uh, more sustainability as far as employment in a supply chain setting, um, which kind of seems um, interesting given today's uh, supply chain situations where everything's been kind of flux and it's a growing field, but um, uh, more of the methodology is about putting the people in the right place um, and uh, uh, kind of from that social change implication aspect of, of creating that everlasting, you know, uh, uh, job you can find a home in and part of that training and leadership engagement hopefully uh, contributes to that. Um, limitations of the study uh, I found unique was, uh, uh, you know, it wasn't necessarily reflected of a larger population of supply chain leaders because, of course, I couldn't in interview every supply chain leader. Um, uh, that would have been great, but may have taken a little bit of time. Uh, I, I did, you know, get six uh, specific participants. Um, and also, again, one organization um, may not represent, you know, the, uh, uh, the way that other organizations might uh, consider continuous improvement practices uh, uh, from the different per uh, participants. Um, and again, even the, like the single case study aspect may provide limit, limitations in the range. If I did multiple case, um, you know, where I might have looked at different types of organizations out there, targeted this one and this one, um, given time constraints and and the fact that I wanted to graduate, um, that was also a key motivator. So, um, but uh, but that's a, a kind of where uh, it. it Came uh, came to I think again most of the limitation uh, was based on that and and kind of considering it now I mentioned uh, uh, most of this study happened during the height of you know uh, COVID impacts on the supply chain world which um, had a lot of uh, disruption turnover long hours um, uh, so you know getting into companies to view specifically um, was very limited. Uh, um, not like it, it's eased up some today, but not before um, where I could just walk in and say, can I go look at um, uh, is a little different, I, I think. Uh, so it's, it's definitely may have had some limitations based on that. But um, but uh, yeah, that's uh, I think uh, the next couple slides are just um, uh, references at that point. And um, I'll turn it over to any questions you may have. <laughs> excellent. Thank you so much for your presentation. That was excellent. Thank you. Um, we do now have a few minutes for questions, so feel free to post your questions and comments for our speaker in the chat. Um, we do also have a smaller group, so if you are comfortable, you can also unmute yourself and share your comments and questions that way as well. Some excellent feedback in the chat, <laughs> so that's great to see. Very informative, um, great job. Well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and we can pause for just another minute to see if there are any questions before we wrap things up. No questions. Um, just a comment, Dr. Williams. Um, yes, it was good to hear you talk about the quality management approach that you utilize. I'm currently um, participating in an organizational continuous improvement um, uh, operation, I'll call it, not a project. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. And I'm, and I'm listening to you and I'm going, oh my goodness, yes, that's <laughs> where we are, <laughs> even in operations, not even just supply chain management, right? Just, um, so um, well done and thanks for the information. Oh, thank you for the comments. Yeah, well, ho hopefully your 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 part uh, gets uh, gets better and is more enjoyable. <laughs> okay.
Excellent. Um, well, since we didn't get any formal questions, I do have one question to pose to you, if that's okay. Okay. Um, my question is, what's one bit of advice that you would give to Walden students who are approaching this stage of their program? Oh, um, uh, you being completed with their study or just starting it or? Um, I like guess what... just starting their research. Oh, just starting. Okay, the yeah. research. <laughs> Um, oh, uh, you know, the most important thing to me, and, and, and I, I went to um, one of the residencies early on before I uh, ever started, um, you know, even this phase of it, was uh, find something that you like as a topic, um, because you're going to edit it so many times um, and stick through the process that uh, by the time you're done, you might not like the topic, but you will again one day. Um, so I think that was probably the best advice I got was uh, pick something I like and um, on the um, kind of industry side of things before I jumped into higher education, I did process improvement. Um, and uh, I really enjoyed the field and continuous improvement as a topic. And uh, I thought, you know, there's, I, I want to invest time in this and learning about it. And um, so I think for me it was uh, finding something that you truly like, that you're going to want to spend many, many, many hours reading about and researching and writing about and, and rewriting about sometimes. <laughs> but, um, uh, but yeah, that'd be my best advice is make sure you pick a topic that's something you truly enjoy. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you so much. Absolutely. All right. Well, thank you again for sharing your presentation and your experience. Thank you. Thank you.